is coming out of this. Something good is coming out of this. Let us pray. Dear Lord God, my heavenly Father, in the mighty and holy name of Jesus, dear Lord, I come before you, Lord, as humble as I know how. Desire for you to come on in the midst. Pray, Lord, you will speak through your sermon today. Please forgive me for all of my sins and shortcomings. Please send forth your anointing to destroy every yoke that will oppose your word or your sermon today. And let your word go forth free under the anointing of the Holy Ghost and the power. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. God bless you. One time, if you will, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. We're here to talk about something good is coming out of this. If you believe that, give the Lord a hand down. <laughs> Whenever we have disappointments or have to deal with trying circumstances that arise in our lives, it is somewhat easy to think negatively uh, from the start. Thoughts of why me, why now? This is a terrible thing to happen to me. How am I going to make it? How am I going to get through this? Or this is too hard for me. Seems to be the order of the day. Long before we have faith and trust in God to kick in. Many times we allow fear, doubt, and anxiety to rule the night. We who have been saved or in church for any length of time should already be settled in the fact that no matter what the situation is in our lives, that through uh, faith in God is already all right. You see, because scripture has already determined that man that's born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. First Peter 4, 12 and 13 says, Think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened unto you. But rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye are glad also with exceeding joy. I've been encouraged by James 1, 2-4, where it says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect, which is mature, established, wanting or lacking nothing. Isn't that all right? Uh, so as a result of this, amen, we don't just go through it, we grow through it. And as we look for the good in our suffering, amen, uh, we ought to understand and thank God that something good is coming out of this. Do you believe that up to them? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, suffering, yeah, is an underrated art form, if you will, because it means to endure, to undergo to allow or to tolerate, to undergo pain, uh, uh, undergo punishment, amen, and so forth. All of these, uh, uh, they describe what Jesus went through when he gave his life for us on the cross. Amen. And for those of you who say that you name the name of Christ, don't forget and always remember that Matthew 16, 24 says, If any man will come after me, let him first deny himself, take up his cross, which represents suffering daily, and follow me. Isn't that all right? Amen. I don't know about you, but I believe that something good is coming out of our suffering. Somebody shout glory. Amen. So I believe that the Apostle Paul looked for and discovered and found some good in 
his suffering. When he wrote Romans 8, 18, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Ladies and gentlemen, suffering is not always as bad as we make it out to be. Uh -huh. But I wonder how many of you today believe, amen, that some good is going to come out of your suffering. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, as we look at our text today, we notice uh, how the 44th book of our chronological Holy Bible, the fifth book of the New Testament called the Book of Acts of the Apostles, which could also be known as uh, Acts actions or activities of the apostles or disciples of Christ. Acts is believed to have been written by a Greek Gentile Christian uh, a physician by the name of Luke and or around 62 to 70 AD. It was addressed to a Gentile convert by the name of Theophilus who also was the recipient of the gospel of Luke and his name means lover of God. Now, the purpose of this letter was to show how the church was formed and grew through the witness of the believers both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and even unto the uttermost part of the earth as Jesus had foretold. Now, here in chapter 8, beginning at verse 1, uh, the Bible says that Saul was consenting unto his death, talking about the death of Stephen. And at this time, there was a great persecution against the church, amen, which was at Jerusalem. So this Saul, amen, who we know would later become the apostle Paul after his conversion. But in this text, amen, he was Saul of Tarsus, amen, and he was inflamed uh, with hatred for anyone, amen, who claimed Christianity or identified with the name of Christ. Imagine, if you will, Stephen, a servant of the Lord, a man making a final appeal to the children of Israel to turn to Jesus from their wicked ways. Uh-huh, and as he rehearsed Israel's history from Abraham to Jesus, he pointed out their rejection of the prophets who foretold of Jesus as well as their murderous plot on their boat. Amen. And this account we have of Stephen in chapter 7, beginning at verse 54, where it says, so when they heard those words from Stephen, condemning their immoral behavior, they were cut to the heart and grinded in their teeth in anger. Amen. But Stephen, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God. And Jesus standing on the right hand of the Father and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Amen. What a sight to see. Amen. But he saw it during his suffering. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah, then the people cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears, yeah, and ran upon uh, him with one accord. Amen. And cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. Uh -huh. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And the Bible saying that he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, saying, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. Uh -huh. And when he had said this, the Bible says he fell asleep. In other words, he died. Somebody shout hallelujah. So again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Saul was consenting unto uh, Stephen's death. So this word consenting here describes Saul as approving of it, giving full consent of his will. Uh, willingly approving and, and approved with pleasure. He delighted, amen. In other words, he gave a standing ovation, if you will, amen, of what was done unto Stephen because he was the old Saul at this time. And the Bible says at that time there was great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. Uh huh. Yeah, and in and, 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 and plain theory now had been building up against the church. Amen. For Saul felt that the preaching of Christ, amen, threatened his religion called Judaism. 
How about in fact Saul was the leader that persecuted the church? He was the one who was hot. He was rock. He was violently angry. Amen. More than any of his Christian or uh, any other Christian adversaries. Amen. And he made persecuting the church a job, a hobby, and a career. Somebody shout glory. Uh -huh. But in the, even at the end of Stephen's natural life, he looked for and found some good. Amen. Knowing that something good is coming out of his. Amen. Even though he faced imminent death. Amen. He had the wherewithal to look, amen, away from what he was going through and look to the good place called heaven. Are you glad about it? And every now and then, we must uh, look away from what we are going through and look to the heavenly kingdom, knowing that one day we're going to be in the heavenly kingdom. Am I right about it? I heard somebody say it like this. One moment in God's kingdom will pay for it all. Are you glad about it? Therefore, I say put your time in because payday is coming. Pay God after a while. Somebody shout hallelujah. And now, wow. Looking there in the natural. Amen. God opened his spiritual eyes. Amen. Allowed him to see in the spirit God the Father and God the Son. Amen. Whom he believed, trusted in, and preached while he searched her here on the earth as a pilgrim and a stranger. Ladies and gentlemen, they were stoning him, but yet he continued to look to heaven. He began to look for the good in his suffering. He knew that something good was coming out of this. Are you glad about it? Amen. He found enough love. He found enough conviction and compassion and he was strength to pray for the ones who had stoned him to death by requesting that God lay out this murderous sin to their charge. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. So when the great persecution of the Jerusalem church arose in the light of the uh, persecution and execution of, of Stephen, amen, the Christians, with the exception of the apostles, they were scattered abroad, amen, throughout the region of uh, Judea and Samaria, and even uh, the uttermost part of the earth, as Jesus had said. So Saul and his lynchmen, they launched persecution and fury and violence, amen, this was a great persecution. Amen. The idea here is that Saul hotly pursued and chased and hunted down the believers. He was bent on violence. Amen. Utterly determined to stamp out the church at all costs. Amen. Uh, the church at large was all scattered abroad throughout Judea and Samaria, but the apostles remained behind in Jerusalem, and they had been yeah, given some freedom by the authorities, amen, on the advice of Dr. Gamaliel. Uh, the Bible lets us know that they were highly esteemed by the public at large, and on occasion, the authorities feared to have them arrested lest they should call an uprising among the people. The apostles were now courageous men, and they had learned, yeah, they had learned to wait upon the Lord for their instructions, amen, depending strongly on the Holy Ghost. Ain't God a good God? Uh -huh. But also, if the apostles had fled uh, the Jerusalem scene, amen, there would be no, yeah, no stabilizing, amen, uh, at the church in Jerusalem. No leader holding the church together. But remember now, at that time, the only organized church in existence was the church in Jerusalem. Ain't God a good God? So even though some of the saints were imprisoned and scattered, they still needed a church to look to, to, to look for, uh, look toward. And if the apostles uh, had fled the church in Jerusalem, uh -huh, then, then it would have completely been destroyed. Amen. By staying in Jerusalem, they held the church together. The saints, no matter where they had scattered, knew that the church still existed. Amen. Through these courageous leaders. So, in other words, the, the, the leaders staying in Jerusalem while, yeah, while those that were scattered abroad went forth. Amen. In the power of the Holy Ghost. Ain't God a good God? Amen. And, and the devout men carried Stephen to his burial. And made great lamentation or grieving over him. As for Saul, the Bible says he made havoc of the church, entering into every house 
and hauling men and women and committed them to prison. Now, Hans Saul made havoc of the church. That is, he tried to devastate it, tried to destroy it. He tried to utterly wipe it completely out. He wanted to blow it off the map, amen, if you will, and severely uh, persecuted and, and imprisoned both men and women. Amen. He stormed the homes of believers in Christ, breaking open the door and fiercely seeking every believer in the house. He arrested women as well as the men. Women were considered unimportant and insignificant in Saul's day, but yet in the fierceness of and savagery of Paul, he was set on the strong the church and went after the women as well as the men. Hey, thank God to God. His crime against women was to be the offense, amen, that he would never forget. Amen. He stormed every synagogue and punished the believers who were present. Amen. And he tried to force them to blaspheme the name of the Lord. Amen. He hunted them. He hotly pursued them. Amen. Even into the foreign cities. Amen. He brought many to their death. Amen. And gave consent. Amen. To the others. And now what good could come out of this type of suffering? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, there is good in any kind of suffering. But you got to be willing to look for it. Is that all right? Somebody shout, look for the good. Yeah. I have taken it upon myself to look throughout this passage of Scripture. Uh huh. For the good in the suffering of Stephen and the Jerusalem church believers. Now, while I was not there to witness nor be a direct partaker of their suffering, as an outsider looking in, as an interested observer of their life's history, I have concluded to this that verse 4 say, at the very least, a part of the good that accompanied. Their suffering is this. For it says, therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Let me say that again. They that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. These were the lay number of saints. They were not preachers. But members of the congregation who were scattered abroad, yeah, but went everywhere preaching Jesus Christ. Do you hear what I'm saying? So in other words, you don't have to be a preacher to preach Jesus. These believers were the diaspora, the dispersed. They were scattered, amen, just as seed that is sown is sometimes scattered. Am I right about it? God was choosing the evil of the world to spread his followers and his message all over the world. Yes, saints, the devil meant for bad, but I'm so glad that God meant it for their good. Am I right about it? These believers on the run did not hide in secrecy nor in fearful silence, but they preached the word wherever they went. Amen. Preaching the word means to evangelize, to declare, to proclaim, to preach the word of, the, of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ. They may have had the mindset after fleeing from Saul, I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I just couldn't keep it to myself. I wonder how many saints I have like that on today. Maybe they developed from the apostles that I can't help it by declaring that we cannot but speak those things which we have seen and heard. Thank God and God. They were, no doubt, suffering the loss of the security of being stationary uh -huh, in one place called Jerusalem. Uh -huh, but they were willing to look for the good in that suffering, knowing that God would provide them a new home with me. And, and, and they continued to tell the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. And to tell about the new heavenly home. Isn't that all right? I'm wrapping this thing up, but ladies and gentlemen, beloved of God, it is high time that you know and believe the truth about suffering. 
as I get ready to go to my seat. Uh, Philippians 129 say, for unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. Somebody shout glory. Second Timothy 2 Timothy 2.12 says, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. Philippians 3 10 says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. Isn't that all right? First Peter 3 14 says, if ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy or blessed are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Are you glad about it? 2 Corinthians 4, 17, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, working for us a far uh, more exceeding and eternal way of glory. Look at and, 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 and Hebrews 12 say, looking at Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despite the shame, and is now set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Thank God, good God. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to let you know you may be suffering right now, but if you can have faith in God, amen, you can believe that something good is coming out of it. Thank God, good God. Amen. Something good, amen, is coming out of this. Uh huh. You may be going through eviction right now or foreclosure. Amen. But something good is coming out of this. A new home or a new house. Amen. That God has prepared for you. Thank God a good God. You may be going through on your job. You may have lost your job. Amen. But something good is coming out of this. A new job. A better job. Better pay and better benefit if you can believe God. Thank God a good God. Amen. Something good is coming out of this. Amen. Yeah. You may be, amen, in a stormy relationship or your relationship has now been failed. Amen. But something good, amen, is coming out of this. Maybe a new and better relationship. Amen. After the betrayal of the heartbreak of your other relationship. Thank God, good God. Amen. Something good is coming out of your suffering. Amen. Make it strength to endure the misery that you once could not endure. Amen. You remember how you used to cry and boo-hoo and throw up your hands, but now you have gained strength, amen, to what you are going through. Something good is coming out of this. Thank God and good God. Amen. Peace uh -huh, that passes all understanding. Amen. After having been traumatized by, yeah, by a set of unfortunate circumstances, amen, may be the good that's coming out of this. Thank God a good God. Amen. A newfound perspective on your present circumstances and a brighter outlook for the future may come as a result of what you're going through. Thank God a good God. I just believe that something good is coming out of this subject. Maybe a greater knowledge and conviction of how God can and will provide. Are you glad about it? Amen. You can say, like David, I have been young, but now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. God will provide. Are you glad about it? Amen. Something good is coming out of this suffering. Amen. Yeah. Maybe a mighty testimony and a greater witness of how and how good God really is. Are you glad about it? And then something good is coming out of your suffering. You're suffering right now. You're going through it, amen. Your back is against the wall. Your wall is against your back. Amen. But I'm here to let you know that something good, something good is coming out of this. God is not going to leave you defenseless. He's not going to leave you by yourself. He's not going to leave you to fend for yourself. I believe that something good is coming out of this. Amen. A more consecrated and deeper dedication. Amen. And a life after Christ. Amen. After you have been delivered out of your storm. Or maybe a personal, a more intimate knowledge of and the eternal, internal awareness 
that God is real. Something good is coming. How it is. Are you glad about it? You're not going through just that you're going through. Amen. God is going to reward you for what you give him and for what you're going through. I don't know about you, but whatever I go through, I go through it in faith. Believe me, that something good is coming out of this. If you believe that, in the Lord, I ain't got it. Something good is coming out of this. You may be going through something that nobody knows you're going through. In your mind, you're having it hard, and you don't know how much you can take. But Jesus knows all about it. Amen. And he's looking down on you in your situation, knowing that your situation has an expiration date. There was a time of inception when it started. There's a time to go through the trial and to grow through the trial. But there's also an expiration date that I believe God has for you to come out of or be delivered out of your situation. Amen. And when that expiration date uh, occurs, I believe you can look, amen, and see that something good is coming out of this. Amen. Amen. The devil meant it for bad, but I'm so glad God meant it for my good. And the scriptures say, there has no temptation or trial taken you, but such as is common to man. But God who is faithful will not suffer you to be tempted or tested or tried above that which you are able. But will also, with the temptation, make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. Amen. Ain't God good? That whatever you're going through, his grace is sufficient. Amen. Why are you going through it? But just know it is. Something good is coming out of this. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. The word of God hasn't been preached. I'm going to extend an invitation to those who don't know Jesus and the pardon of your sin. Those who are not saved, sinners who want to be claimed or want to be born again. Now's your time. Today is the accepted time. Now's the accepted time, and today is the day of salvation. Amen. And there's someone listening to me today who wants to give your life to Jesus. I want you to pray this prayer with me, Father God in heaven. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, I come before you as a sinner in need of salvation. I believe in you, Father. I believe in your Son, Jesus Christ. I believe that he died on the cross for my sin and that you raised him for my justification. Lord, I ask that you will come into my heart, forgive me of all, of all my sin, and make me a new creature in you. I now make you the Lord and Master and Savior of my life. And based on my confession and according to your word, Lord, I want to thank you for saving me. Amen. That's all it is, saints. It's all you have to do is believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead. And the scriptures say, Thou shalt be saved. And with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Amen. Thank God. Amen. That you are now a child of God. If you pray that prayer, you will see God. Amen. We ask now that you would just find you a beautiful church home where you can grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we invite you to Born Again Ministry, 4779 NC, Highway 33 Northwest Harbor, North Carolina, 27886. Amen. Where the word of God is preached, the love of God is on display, and the name of Jesus is glorified. Amen. We welcome you to the family of God. Amen. So again, we thank all who have tuned in today. We thank all of our Zoom uh, morning in ministry family. We thank God for uh, all the Facebook Live listeners. We thank God for the YouTube subscribers and everybody who has listened to us on today. We bid God speak. And I want you to
to have a beautiful and wonderful rest of the day. God bless you. Be blessed.